I'm pleased to say live from Saracen's training ground, would you believe we have Billy Vanapola, just a tremendous guy. I, I don't know, I've watched him play, and many of us have, and we're inspired by the guy. Six foot two inches, 20 stone, but what a good fella. Number eight joins us live. How are you, Billy? Yeah, very good, thanks. Uh, sorry I'm late. I'm just fresh out of the gym, so. Mate, yeah. you're training, and so you've, you've got permission. You're allowed to do that. It's really good to have your company today. And I know you've just you've written a book, haven't you? Which um, is called Wrecking Ball, a big lad from a small island. That about sums you up, really, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, I think within the book, um, I'll just talk about, I guess, how blessed I am and my family to be where we are right now. Um, you know, sometimes we walk away from, or I get a bit of success. I talk about that in the book. And I think that, you know, I've cracked it and, I get humbled and then I start the whole process again of being humble and and following Christ. And then again, a bit like the Bible, I, I always think that, you know, I'm, I'm stronger by myself. And I think that's the journey that I'm still on at the moment. But um, that's kind of what the book's about. You're very honest and I really appreciate that. I, I want to ask you what it's like being uh, in a World Cup final, you know, playing with great teams, with great sportsmen and under pressure all the time. Uh, how do you cope with that pressure and the winning and the losing? Um, I think with um, with my faith in God and Jesus Christ, um, it gives me, a, a, I guess, a gratitude for the things that I have before I even go into a game like that. Um, sure, I get nervous, I do. Um, but it gives you a bigger perspective on life. Uh, like I said about my book, I realise how lucky I am for the things that went before the World Cup final, to actually be there and be fit with all my injuries uh, the previous years, uh, the trophies I won before that, if, if you hold weight in those things, material things, it can drag you down. And I think that if I look back at my past, you know, recent past, um, we lost finals before and we've always come back. And, and that's, that's, I guess, what God's trying to um, test my faith, you know, not just when everything's going well, when things do go wrong, when we lost the final, I, I think in my head I was like, okay, what lessons do I need to learn from this? And it was to be grateful for the position that I was in and, and have that content that contentment that I'm very lucky to be one of the 30 that was on the pitch. So, you know, that's what I took away from it. I know we lost the game, but, you know, I, I went home and my family still loved me and uh, my wife still loves me. And, um, and that's what, that's how I thought of it because of, uh, the foundations that Jesus has put in my heart. Family is very important to you. Do you mind sharing a little bit about how important faith is to your family? Well, it's kind of the cornerstone of everything that we do. Um, a little example would be, if, if for example, we're buying a house. Uh, we all sit down and pray about it. Um, we always look for a direction through God, through God and Jesus rather than through our own strength. Um, and that gives us, like a, a, I guess, a peaceful feeling. Um, that someone else or God has, has control of whatever is in our future. And sometimes we do worry. Like, I'm not going to lie and say that we're perfect and we don't worry and stress about things in life. But um, for some reason, there's always like a, a perfect chapter that you open up the Bible when you read it and it kind of um, speaks to you for that moment of your life. And, and that's why we use it because it's kind of... Um, I guess you're, if you're a baby, it's like your mum or your dad leading you through because the unknown. I mean, that's kind of what my family's been or have taught me. And that's what they got taught when they were growing up. And um, it brings us together. Your mum's a, a minister. And uh, what's it like having a mum as a minister? Um, I think it's awesome. Um, I think she's she's definitely the one that has... has um, encouraged us to, to go on this journey of searching for for God. Um, to start off with, I won't lie, that we, we didn't enjoy going to church. Um, we were made to as kids, but the older I've got um, and the more responsibilities and, and I guess, adult things that happen, for example, like uh, your house, your wife, your kids, you know, you, you, you find that, um, the only person that can help you carry those burdens or ease those um, uh, stresses in life is is God. And, and that's what I found. And I know it sounds a bit 
uh, shallow, but that's kind of why um, I started searching for God, because the more I went looking for God in Bible and scripture, the, the more peace it gave me with things in my life, especially my injuries. Um, you know, I started off by asking the wrong questions. Uh, why is this happening to me? Um, having self-pity. Um, and then you read something in uh, the Proverbs that tells you about conceited people and, and arrogant people and, and the book of Isaiah about, you know, people of um, Jerusalem being being humbled and, and being put in a place where they, they will go back to, to God. And that's where I found myself. Um, because like I said before, I, I thought that I did it myself. I thought that all the blessings that I got, all the, the attention that I managed to get was because of my own doing. But, you know, God put me in a position to spread his word and, and I didn't do that, which is what I'm trying to do now. Mm. I should say, by the way, you, you, your testimony is wonderful and you, you had a chat with Creation Fest uh, this week. And if people want to go to that uh, YouTube channel uh, and check that out, they'll be really blessed by that conversation you had on there and the stories. But uh, Billy, can I ask you a question? There's a lot of young people listening who'd be pretty impressed that, that, you know, that you're talking to us now, but they're also inspired by you. But what would you say to them if they're, they're sort of like wondering about whether they should have a faith or not have a faith in their life? And is it, can you be a, a sportsman? Can you be somebody and have faith? Oh, definitely. I think I learn every day from different, parts of life whether it's social media or from the bible but i think the biggest question i would say to someone is everyone's doing the same thing right now um you know everyone's drinking everyone's um you know having sex everyone's doing drugs but there's still always like for some reason there's a high rate of mental health issues um like an empty feeling that that i had when i was injured i felt like there was something missing and then when I went looking for, for God and Jesus Christ, that was when I had that peaceful feeling. And that's when I realized that like, I don't have to live by the, the standards of, of everyone else. And also the same, my point is, what have you got to lose? You know, you've tried everything else. Um, most people have tried everything else. What, what have you got to lose by, by reading the Bible? Um, people might say to you that, that God is this big fairy in the sky and yet, We've still got people out there who believe that the earth is flat. Um, so what have you got to lose? You know, um, that's what I found was that once the further away I got from God, the unhappier I was. And the closer I got, the more content I am, the more gratitude I had. And, you know, people talk about kindness, but true kindness is uh, that selflessness that not a lot of us have, including myself. And that's what I'm trying to improve. Sorry, there's a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That does that does prove it's live. That's for sure. Uh, so, can you hear me? Just about hear me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, quickly about rugby, Saracens, England. It's an awkward time for sports people at the moment with the fact that the crowds aren't there and so on. Uh, is, is that a bit of a struggle? No. Again, there's there's more important things going on in the world for us to complain about. Not having a crowd or we not being paid what we should be being paid. It's, again, I've gone back to it. We're, we're probably way better off than a lot of people out there. So we're going to be thankful for this situation that we're in. There's nothing for us to complain about. Uh, we've got a roof over our heads. The weather's nice. The weather's lovely. And, you know, all that stuff is, is kind of, if, if you're letting that stuff get to you, then I think, I don't know, you, you need to have a good look at yourself. <laughs> I think when you say that, I'd, I would definitely listen if you told me to have a good look at myself. Uh, at six foot two inches, I'm not going to argue with you, mate, that's for sure. Um, I was going to ask you, just before you prepare for games or before you do something really big, um, what, what is part of that preparation? Is prayer a part of that preparation for you and, and meditating on, on God and so on? Oh, 100%. Um, before we go up for the game, I you say a prayer for protection more than, more than anything. You don't ask to win. You don't ask to hurt anyone else um you pray for you know god's protective shield to, to um cover you and also to have his strength you know the strength of um david or or samson and and that's it it's it's pretty simple it's you know i, I know god's put me in a position and i think where i missed the trick was you know i get a man of the match and that's my stage to promote 
my faith and I don't do that. So that's something that I did before and I'll go back to. But for preparations, it's it's just like, you know, my, my wife, um, I don't know. It's like a job for my wife when she goes to work. It's it's my job. I'm going to work. But, you know, I just I just pray that God blesses me with my work. That's it. And are there many people in the professional sport world who are starting now to uh, express their faith more? Is that becoming more obvious? Have you come across more people who are saying, you know, I believe? Uh, yeah, definitely. Even if they don't say it, you, you see on their wrists, you know, a lot of people are putting the cross on their wrists to say that, you know, this is, this is who I am. I'm a follower of Christ and I don't have to do that because I spend half of my time telling everyone anyway. So um, there's a lot more of an expression from, from players and, and people around that. And I've definitely had more people ask me questions as, as to why I have such a strong faith and, and why I'm willing to stand on my own um, in certain situations because of my faith. Um, and yeah, it's, it's nice to share it with other people and for them to ask questions. Billy, it's been wonderful talking with you and I'm so grateful that you took time out of training to, to speak with us here on Premier Christian Radio. Uh, your book is amazing, Wrecking Ball, A Big Land from a small island do check that out if you can do check out creation fest too to listen to uh, to billy talk is there a final thought you'd like to leave with people listening who are going like hey you know i'm whatever you know i'm not sure about god um but you know billy can billy convince me that i should believe in god i think uh, the first thing is obviously um, <coughs> um that you don't have to be perfect to be a christian that's the biggest thing um, that I, I realize from other people is that they think that i'm perfect and i'm not um, the second thing is probably about what have you got to lose and then the third and last thing is if, if you don't feel like opening the Bible one thing I've never done is regretted reading it once I've opened it you know sometimes I get up and I don't feel like reading it but when I close it there's always a message in there for me so those are probably my three, my three key points um, you know you don't have to be perfect you've got nothing to lose and then once you open it you know, you won't regret it. Billy Vanapola, uh, terrific player. Love watching you play, mate. I can't wait to see you playing more games. You're an inspiration, and I'm so grateful that you've talked to us today here on Premier Christian Radio. God bless you. Look after yourself, mate. Thank you. God bless you too. Thanks for having me.